M theory is a theory in physics that unifies all consistent versions of superstring theory. The existence of such a theory was first conjectured by Edward Witten at a string theory conference at the University of Southern California in the spring of 1995. Witten's announcement initiated a flurry of research activity known as the Second Superstring Revolution. Prior to Witten's announcement, string theorists had identified five versions of superstring theory. Although these theories appeared, at first, to be very different, work by several physicists showed that the theories were related in intricate and nontrivial ways. In particular, physicists found that apparently distinct theories could be unified by mathematical transformations called S-duality and T-duality. Witten's conjecture was based in part on the existence of these dualities and in part on the relationship of the string theories to a field theory called 11-dimensional supergravity. Although a complete formulation of M-theory is not known, the theory should describe two- and five-dimensional objects called brains and should be approximated by 11-dimensional supergravity at low energies. Modern attempts to formulate M-theory are typically based on matrix theory or the ADS-CFT correspondence. According to Witten, M should stand for magic, mystery, or membrane according to taste, and the true meaning of the title should be decided when a more fundamental formulation of the theory is known. Investigations of the mathematical structure of M theory have spawned important theoretical results in physics and mathematics. More speculatively, M theory may provide a framework for developing a unified theory of all of the fundamental forces of nature. Attempts to connect M theory to experiment typically focus on compactifying its extra dimensions to construct candidate models of our four dimensional world, although so far none has been verified to give rise to physics as observed in high energy physics experiments. <laughs> <laughs> Background <laughs> Quantum gravity and strings One of the deepest problems in modern physics is the problem of quantum gravity. The current understanding of gravity is based on Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, which is formulated within the framework of classical physics. However, non-gravitational forces are described within the framework of quantum mechanics, a radically different formalism for describing physical phenomena based on probability. A quantum theory of gravity is needed in order to reconcile general relativity with the principles of quantum mechanics, but difficulties arise when one attempts to apply the usual prescriptions of quantum theory to the force of gravity. String theory is a theoretical framework that attempts to reconcile gravity and quantum mechanics. In string theory, the point like particles of particle physics are replaced by one dimensional objects called strings. String theory describes how strings propagate through space and interact with each other. In a given version of string theory, there is only one kind of string, which may look like a small loop or segment of ordinary string, and it can vibrate in different ways. On distance scales larger than the string scale, a string will look just like an ordinary particle, with its mass, charge, and other properties determined by the vibrational state of the string. In this way, all of the different elementary particles may be viewed as vibrating strings. One of the vibrational states of a string gives rise to the graviton, a quantum mechanical particle that carries gravitational force. There are several versions of string theory, type 1, type IIA, type IIB, and two flavors of heterotic string theory, so 32 and E8 times E8. The different theories allow different types of strings, and the particles that arise at low energies exhibit different symmetries. For example, the type 1 theory includes both open strings which are segments with endpoints and closed strings which form closed loops, while types IIA and IIB include only closed strings. Each of these five string theories arises as a special limiting case of M-theory. This theory, like its string theory predecessors, is an example of a quantum theory of gravity. It describes a force just like the familiar gravitational force subject to the rules of quantum mechanics. Topic. Number of dimensions In everyday life, there are three familiar dimensions of space, height, width and depth. Einstein's general theory of relativity treats time as a dimension on par with the three spatial dimensions. In general relativity, space and time are not modeled as separate entities but are instead unified to a four-dimensional spacetime, three spatial dimensions and one time dimension. In this framework, the phenomenon of gravity is viewed as a consequence of the geometry of spacetime. In spite of the fact that the universe is well described by four dimensional spacetime, there are several reasons why physicists consider theories in other dimensions. 
In some cases, by modeling spacetime in a different number of dimensions, a theory becomes more mathematically tractable, and one can perform calculations and gain general insights more easily. There are also situations where theories in two or three spacetime dimensions are useful for describing phenomena in condensed matter physics. Finally, there exist scenarios in which there could actually be more than four dimensions of spacetime which have nonetheless managed to escape detection. One notable feature of string theory and M theory is that these theories require extra dimensions of spacetime for their mathematical consistency. In string theory, spacetime is 10 dimensional, 9 spatial dimensions and 1 time dimension, while in M theory it is 11 dimensional, 10 spatial dimensions and 1 time dimension. In order to describe real physical phenomena using these theories, one must therefore imagine scenarios in which these extra dimensions would not be observed in experiments. Compactification is one way of modifying the number of dimensions in a physical theory. In compactification, some of the extra dimensions are assumed to close up on themselves to form circles. In the limit where these curled up dimensions become very small, one obtains a theory in which spacetime has effectively a lower number of dimensions. A standard analogy for this is to consider a multidimensional object such as a garden hose. If the hose is viewed from a sufficient distance, it appears to have only one dimension, its length. However, as one approaches the hose, one discovers that it contains a second dimension, its circumference. Thus, an ant crawling on the surface of the hose would move in two dimensions. Topic. Dualities. Theories that arise as different limits of M theory turn out to be related in highly nontrivial ways. One of the relationships that can exist between these different physical theories is called S duality. This is a relationship which says that a collection of strongly interacting particles in one theory can, in some cases, be viewed as a collection of weakly interacting particles in a completely different theory. Roughly speaking, a collection of particles is said to be strongly interacting if they combine and decay often and weakly interacting if they do so infrequently. Type 1 string theory turns out to be equivalent by S duality to the SO 32 heterotic string theory. Similarly, type IIB string theory is related to itself in a non-trivial way by S duality. Another relationship between different string theories is T duality. Here one considers strings propagating around a circular extra dimension. T duality states that a string propagating around a circle of radius r is equivalent to a string propagating around a circle of radius 1, r in the sense that all observable quantities in one description are identified with quantities in the dual description. For example, a string has momentum as it propagates around a circle, and it can also wind around the circle one or more times. The number of times the string winds around a circle is called the winding number. If a string has momentum p and winding number n in one description, it will have momentum n and winding number p in the dual description. For example, type IIA string theory is equivalent to type IIB string theory via T duality, and the two versions of heterotic string theory are also related by T duality. In general, the term duality refers to a situation where two seemingly different physical systems turn out to be equivalent in a non-trivial way. If two theories are related by a duality, it means that one theory can be transformed in some way so that it ends up looking just like the other theory. The two theories are then said to be dual to one another under the transformation. Put differently, the two theories are mathematically different descriptions of the same phenomena. Topic. Supersymmetry Another important theoretical idea that plays a role in M-theory is supersymmetry. This is a mathematical relation that exists in certain physical theories between a class of particles called bosons and a class of particles called fermions. Roughly speaking, fermions are the constituents of matter, while bosons mediate interactions between particles. In theories with supersymmetry, each boson has a counterpart which is a fermion, and vice versa. When supersymmetry is imposed as a local symmetry, one automatically obtains a quantum mechanical theory that includes gravity. Such a theory is called a supergravity theory. A theory of strings that incorporates the idea of supersymmetry is called a superstring theory. There are several different versions of superstring theory which are all subsumed within the M theory framework. At low energies, the superstring theories are approximated by supergravity in 10 spacetime dimensions. Similarly, M theory is approximated at low energies by supergravity in 11 dimensions. Topic: Brains. 
In string theory and related theories such as supergravity theories, a brain is a physical object that generalizes the notion of a point particle to higher dimensions. For example, a point particle can be viewed as a brain of dimension 0, while a string can be viewed as a brain of dimension 1. It is also possible to consider higher dimensional brains. In dimension p, these are called p-brains. Brains are dynamical objects which can propagate through spacetime according to the rules of quantum mechanics. They can have mass and other attributes such as charge. A p-brain sweeps out a p plus 1 dimensional volume in spacetime called its world volume. Physicists often study fields analogous to the electromagnetic field which live on the world volume of a brain. The word brain comes from the word membrane, which refers to a two-dimensional brain. In string theory, the fundamental objects that give rise to elementary particles are the one-dimensional strings. Although the physical phenomena described by M theory are still poorly understood, physicists know that the theory describes two and five-dimensional brains. Much of the current research in M theory attempts to better understand the properties of these brains. History and development Kaluza-Klein <laughs> theory In the early 20th century, physicists and mathematicians including Albert Einstein and Hermann Minkowski pioneered the use of four-dimensional geometry for describing the physical world. These efforts culminated in the formulation of Einstein's general theory of relativity, which relates gravity to the geometry of four-dimensional spacetime. The success of general relativity led to efforts to apply higher dimensional geometry to explain other forces. In 1919, work by Theodore Kaluza showed that by passing to five-dimensional spacetime, one can unify gravity and electromagnetism into a single force. This idea was improved by physicist Oscar Klein, who suggested that the additional dimension proposed by Kaluza could take the form of a circle with radius around 10-30 cm. The Kaluza-Klein theory and subsequent attempts by Einstein to develop unified field theory were never completely successful. In part this was because Kaluza-Klein theory predicted a particle that has never been shown to exist, and in part because it was unable to correctly predict the ratio of an electron's mass to its charge. In addition, these theories were being developed just as other physicists were beginning to discover quantum mechanics, which would ultimately prove successful in describing known forces such as electromagnetism, as well as new nuclear forces that were being discovered throughout the middle part of the century. Thus it would take almost 50 years for the idea of new dimensions to be taken seriously again. <laughs> Early work on supergravity New concepts and mathematical tools provided fresh insights into general relativity, giving rise to a period in the 1960s to 70s now known as the Golden Age of General Relativity. In the mid-1970s, physicists began studying higher dimensional theories combining general relativity with supersymmetry, the so-called supergravity theories. General relativity does not place any limits on the possible dimensions of spacetime. Although the theory is typically formulated in four dimensions, one can write down the same equations for the gravitational field in any number of dimensions. Supergravity is more restrictive because it places an upper limit on the number of dimensions. In 1978, work by Werner Nam showed that the maximum spacetime dimension in which one can formulate a consistent supersymmetric theory is 11. In the same year, Eugene Kremer, Bernard Julia, and Joel Scherk of the École Normale Supérieure showed that supergravity not only permits up to 11 dimensions but is in fact most elegant in this maximal number of dimensions. Initially, many physicists hoped that by compactifying 11 dimensional supergravity, it might be possible to construct realistic models of our four dimensional world. The hope was that such models would provide a unified description of the four fundamental forces of nature electromagnetism, the strong and weak nuclear forces, and gravity. Interest in 11-dimensional supergravity soon waned as various flaws in this scheme were discovered. One of the problems was that the laws of physics appear to distinguish between clockwise and counterclockwise, a phenomenon known as chirality. Edward Witten and others observed this chirality property cannot be readily derived by compactifying from 11 dimensions. In the first superstring revolution in 1984, many physicists turned to string theory as a unified theory of particle physics and quantum gravity. Unlike supergravity theory, string theory was able to accommodate the chirality of the standard model, and it provided a theory of gravity consistent with quantum effects. Another feature of string theory that many physicists were drawn to in the 1980s and 1990s was its high degree of uniqueness. 
In ordinary particle theories, one can consider any collection of elementary particles whose classical behavior is described by an arbitrary Lagrangian. In string theory, the possibilities are much more constrained. By the 1990s, physicists had argued that there were only five consistent supersymmetric versions of the theory. Topic: <laughs> Relationships between string theories. Although there were only a handful of consistent superstring theories, it remained a mystery why there was not just one consistent formulation. However, as physicists began to examine string theory more closely, they realized that these theories are related in intricate and nontrivial ways. In the late 1970s, Klaus Montanen and David Olive had conjectured a special property of certain physical theories. A sharpened version of their conjecture concerns a theory called N. Topic: <laughs> Four supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory, which describes theoretical particles formally similar to the quarks and gluons that make up atomic nuclei. The strength with which the particles of this theory interact is measured by a number called the coupling constant. The result of Montanen and Olive, now known as Montanen-Olive duality, states that n 4 supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory with coupling constant g is equivalent to the same theory with coupling constant 1 per gram. In other words, a system of strongly interacting particles large coupling constant has an equivalent description as a system of weakly interacting particles small coupling constant and vice versa by spin moment. In the 1990s, several theorists generalized Montan and Olive duality to the S-duality relationship, which connects different string theories. Ashok Sen studied S-duality in the context of heterotic strings in four dimensions. Chris Hull and Paul Townsend showed that type IIB string theory with a large coupling constant is equivalent via S-duality to the same theory with small coupling constant. Theorists also found that different string theories may be related by T-duality. This duality implies that strings propagating on completely different spacetime geometries may be physically equivalent. Topic. Membranes and five brains String theory extends ordinary particle physics by replacing zero-dimensional point particles by one-dimensional objects called strings. In the late 1980s, it was natural for theorists to attempt to formulate other extensions in which particles are replaced by two-dimensional supermembranes or by higher-dimensional objects called brains. Such objects had been considered as early as 1962 by Paul Dirac, and they were reconsidered by a small but enthusiastic group of physicists in the 1980s. Supersymmetry severely restricts the possible number of dimensions of a brain. In 1987, Eric Bergchef, Ergen Setskin, and Paul Townsend showed that 11 dimensional supergravity includes two dimensional brains. Intuitively, these objects look like sheets or membranes propagating through the 11 dimensional spacetime. Shortly after this discovery, Michael Duff, Paul Howe, Takeo Anami, and Kellogg Stell considered a particular compactification of 11-dimensional supergravity with one of the dimensions curled up into a circle. In this setting, one can imagine the membrane wrapping around the circular dimension. If the radius of the circle is sufficiently small, then this membrane looks just like a string in 10-dimensional spacetime. In fact, Duff and his collaborators showed that this construction reproduces exactly the strings appearing in type IIA superstring theory. In 1990, Andrew Strominger published a similar result which suggested that strongly interacting strings in 10 dimensions might have an equivalent description in terms of weakly interacting five dimensional brains. Initially, physicists were unable to prove this relationship for two important reasons. On the one hand, the Montan and Olive duality was still unproven, and so Strominger's conjecture was even more tenuous. On the other hand, there were many technical issues related to the quantum properties of five-dimensional brains. The first of these problems was solved in 1993 when Ashok Sen established that certain physical theories require the existence of objects with both electric and magnetic charge which were predicted by the work of Montanen and Olive. In spite of this progress, the relationship between strings and five-dimensional brains remained conjectural because theorists were unable to quantize the brains. Starting in 1991, a team of researchers including Michael Duff, Ramsey Curry, Jiangsan Liu, and Ruben Minasian considered a special compactification of string theory in which four of the ten dimensions curl up. If one considers a five-dimensional brain wrapped around these extra dimensions, then the brain looks just like a one-dimensional string. In this way, the conjectured relationship between strings and brains was reduced to a relationship between strings and strings, and the latter could be tested using already established theoretical techniques.
Topic: <laughs> Second Superstring Revolution. Speaking at the String Theory Conference at the University of Southern California in 1995, Edward Witten of the Institute for Advanced Study made the surprising suggestion that all five superstring theories were in fact just different limiting cases of a single theory in eleven spacetime dimensions. Witten's announcement drew together all of the previous results on S and T duality and the appearance of two- and five-dimensional brains in string theory. In the months following Witten's announcement, hundreds of new papers appeared on the Internet confirming that the new theory involved membranes in an important way. Today this flurry of work is known as the Second Superstring Revolution. One of the important developments following Witten's announcement was Witten's work in 1996 with string theorist Petter Horava. Witten and Horava studied M-theory on a special spacetime geometry with two ten-dimensional boundary components. Their work shed light on the mathematical structure of M-theory and suggested possible ways of connecting M-theory to real-world physics. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin of the term Initially, some physicists suggested that the new theory was a fundamental theory of membranes, but Witten was skeptical of the role of membranes in the theory. In a paper from 1996, Horava and Witten wrote, as it has been proposed that the 11-dimensional theory is a supermembrane theory but there are some reasons to doubt that interpretation, we will non-committally call it the M-theory, leaving to the future the relation of M to membranes. In the absence of an understanding of the true meaning and structure of M-theory, Witten has suggested that the M should stand for magic, mystery, or membrane, according to taste, and the true meaning of the title should be decided when a more fundamental formulation of the theory is known. Topic. Matrix theory Topic. BFSS matrix model In mathematics, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers or other data. In physics, a matrix model is a particular kind of physical theory whose mathematical formulation involves the notion of a matrix in an important way. A matrix model describes the behavior of a set of matrices within the framework of quantum mechanics. One important example of a matrix model is the BFSS matrix model proposed by Tom Banks, Willie Fischler, Stephen Schenker, and Leonard Susskind in 1997. This theory describes the behavior of a set of nine large matrices. In their original paper, these authors showed, among other things, that the low energy limit of this matrix model is described by 11 dimensional supergravity. These calculations led them to propose that the BFSS matrix model is exactly equivalent to M-theory. The BFSS matrix model can therefore be used as a prototype for a correct formulation of M-theory and a tool for investigating the properties of M-theory in a relatively simple setting. Noncommutative geometry In geometry, it is often useful to introduce coordinates. For example, in order to study the geometry of the Euclidean plane, one defines the coordinates x and y as the distances between any point in the plane and a pair of axes. In ordinary geometry, the coordinates of a point are numbers, so they can be multiplied, and the product of two coordinates does not depend on the order of multiplication. That is, x y equals y x. This property of multiplication is known as the commutative law, and this relationship between geometry and the commutative algebra of coordinates is the starting point for much of modern geometry. Noncommutative geometry is a branch of mathematics that attempts to generalize this situation. Rather than working with ordinary numbers, one considers some similar objects, such as matrices, whose multiplication does not satisfy the commutative law, that is, objects for which xy is not necessarily equal to yx. One imagines that these noncommuting objects are coordinates on some more general notion of space, and proves theorems about these generalized spaces by exploiting the analogy with ordinary geometry. In a paper from 1998, Alain Cons, Michael R. Douglas, and Albert Schwartz showed that some aspects of matrix models and M theory are described by a noncommutative quantum field theory, a special kind of physical theory in which the coordinates on space time do not satisfy the commutativity property. This established a link between matrix models and M-theory on the one hand, and noncommutative geometry on the other hand. It quickly led to the discovery of other important links between noncommutative geometry and various physical theories. Adds, CFT correspondence 
equals topic overview The application of quantum mechanics to physical objects such as the electromagnetic field, which are extended in space and time, is known as quantum field theory. In particle physics, quantum field theories form the basis for our understanding of elementary particles, which are modeled as excitations in the fundamental fields. Quantum field theories are also used throughout condensed matter physics to model particle-like objects called quasiparticles. One approach to formulating M-theory and studying its properties is provided by the anti-de Sitter conformal field theory adds CFT correspondence. Proposed by Juan Maldacena in late 1997, the adds CFT correspondence is a theoretical result which implies that M-theory is in some cases equivalent to a quantum field theory. In addition to providing insights into the mathematical structure of string and M-theory, the ADS CFT correspondence has shed light on many aspects of quantum field theory in regimes where traditional calculational techniques are ineffective. In the ADS CFT correspondence, the geometry of spacetime is described in terms of a certain vacuum solution of Einstein's equation called anti-de Sitter space. In very elementary terms, anti-de Sitter space is a mathematical model of spacetime in which the notion of distance between points the metric is different from the notion of distance in ordinary Euclidean geometry. It is closely related to hyperbolic space, which can be viewed as a disk as illustrated on the left. This image shows a tessellation of a disk by triangles and squares. One can define the distance between points of this disk in such a way that all the triangles and squares are the same size and the circular outer boundary is infinitely far from any point in the interior. Now imagine a stack of hyperbolic disks where each disk represents the state of the universe at a given time. The resulting geometric object is three-dimensional anti-de Sitter space. It looks like a solid cylinder in which any cross-section is a copy of the hyperbolic disk. Time runs along the vertical direction in this picture. The surface of this cylinder plays an important role in the ADS CFT correspondence. As with the hyperbolic plane, anti de Sitter space is curved in such a way that any point in the interior is actually infinitely far from this boundary surface. This construction describes a hypothetical universe with only two space dimensions and one time dimension, but it can be generalized to any number of dimensions. Indeed, hyperbolic space can have more than two dimensions and one can stack up copies of hyperbolic space to get higher dimensional models of anti-de Sitter space. An important feature of anti-de Sitter space is its boundary, which looks like a cylinder in the case of three-dimensional anti-de Sitter space. One property of this boundary is that, within a small region on the surface around any given point, it looks just like Minkowski space, the model of space-time used in non-gravitational physics. One can therefore consider an auxiliary theory in which space-time is given by the boundary of anti-de Sitter space. This observation is the starting point for ADS CFT correspondence, which states that the boundary of anti de Sitter space can be regarded as the spacetime for a quantum field theory. The claim is that this quantum field theory is equivalent to the gravitational theory on the bulk anti de Sitter space in the sense that there is a dictionary for translating entities and calculations in one theory into their counterparts in the other theory. For example, a single particle in the gravitational theory might correspond to some collection of particles in the boundary theory. In addition, the predictions in the two theories are quantitatively identical so that if two particles have a 40% chance of colliding in the gravitational theory, then the corresponding collections in the boundary theory would also have a 40% chance of colliding. Topic: 6D2 0 superconformal field theory. One particular realization of the ADS CFT correspondence states that M theory on the product space ADS 7 times S4 is equivalent to the so called 2 0 theory on the six dimensional boundary. Here, 2 0 refers to the particular type of supersymmetry that appears in the theory. In this example, the spacetime of the gravitational theory is effectively seven dimensional, hence the notation ADS 7, and there are four additional compact dimensions encoded by the S4 factor. In the real world, spacetime is four-dimensional, at least macroscopically, so this version of the correspondence does not provide a realistic model of gravity. Likewise, the dual theory is not a viable model of any real-world system since it describes a world with six spacetime dimensions. Nevertheless, the 2, 0 theory has proven to be important for studying the general properties of quantum field theories. Indeed, this theory subsumes many mathematically interesting effective quantum field theories and points to new dualities relating these theories. 
For example, Luis Alde, David Gayotto, and Yuji Tachikawa showed that by compactifying this theory on a surface, one obtains a four-dimensional quantum field theory, and there is a duality known as the AGT correspondence which relates the physics of this theory to certain physical concepts associated with the surface itself. More recently, theorists have extended these ideas to study the theories obtained by compactifying down to three dimensions. In addition to its applications in quantum field theory, the 2 0 theory has spawned important results in pure mathematics. For example, the existence of the 2 0 theory was used by Witten to give a physical explanation for a conjectural relationship in mathematics called the geometric Langlands correspondence. In subsequent work, Witten showed that the 2 0 theory could be used to understand a concept in mathematics called Korvinov homology. Developed by Mikhail Korvinov around 2000, Korvinov homology provides a tool in knot theory, the branch of mathematics that studies and classifies the different shapes of knots. Another application of the 2 0 theory in mathematics is the work of David Gayotto, Greg Moore, and Andrew Knightsky, which used physical ideas to derive new results in hypercolor geometry. Topic. ABJM superconformal field theory Another realization of the ADS – CFT correspondence states that M theory on ADS 4 times S7 is equivalent to a quantum field theory called the ABJM theory in three dimensions. In this version of the correspondence, seven of the dimensions of M theory are curled up, leaving four non-compact dimensions. Since the spacetime of our universe is four-dimensional, this version of the correspondence provides a somewhat more realistic description of gravity. The ABJM theory appearing in this version of the correspondence is also interesting for a variety of reasons. Introduced by Aharoni, Bergman, Jaffres, and Maldacena, it is closely related to another quantum field theory called Chern-Simons theory. The latter theory was popularized by Witten in the late 1980s because of its applications to knot theory. In addition, the ABJM theory serves as a semi-realistic simplified model for solving problems that arise in condensed matter physics. Topic: Phenomenology. Topic: Overview. In addition to being an idea of considerable theoretical interest, M-theory provides a framework for constructing models of real-world physics that combine general relativity with the standard model of particle physics. Phenomenology is the branch of theoretical physics in which physicists construct realistic models of nature from more abstract theoretical ideas. String phenomenology is the part of string theory that attempts to construct realistic models of particle physics based on string and M-theory. Typically, such models are based on the idea of compactification. Starting with the 10 or 11 dimensional spacetime of string or M theory, physicists postulate a shape for the extra dimensions. By choosing this shape appropriately, they can construct models roughly similar to the standard model of particle physics, together with additional undiscovered particles, usually supersymmetric partners to analogues of known particles. One popular way of deriving realistic physics from string theory is to start with the heterotic theory in 10 dimensions and assume that the six extra dimensions of spacetime are shaped like a six-dimensional Calabi-Yau manifold. This is a special kind of geometric object named after mathematicians Eugenio Calabi and Xing Tung Yao. Calabi-Yau manifolds offer many ways of extracting realistic physics from string theory. Other similar methods can be used to construct models with physics resembling to some extent that of our four-dimensional world based on M-theory, partly because of theoretical and mathematical difficulties and partly because of the extremely high energies beyond what is technologically possible for the foreseeable future needed to test these theories experimentally. There is so far no experimental evidence that would unambiguously point to any of these models being a correct fundamental description of nature. This has led some in the community to criticize these approaches to unification and question the value of continued research on these problems. Topic: <laughs> Compactification on G2 manifolds. In one approach to M-theory phenomenology, theorists assume that the seven extra dimensions of M-theory are shaped like a G2 manifold. This is a special kind of seven-dimensional shape constructed by mathematician Dominic Joyce of the University of Oxford. 
These G2 manifolds are still poorly understood mathematically, and this fact has made it difficult for physicists to fully develop this approach to phenomenology. For example, physicists and mathematicians often assume that space has a mathematical property called smoothness, but this property cannot be assumed in the case of a G2 manifold if one wishes to recover the physics of our four dimensional world. Another problem is that G2 manifolds are not complex manifolds, so theorists are unable to use tools from the branch of mathematics known as complex analysis. Finally, there are many open questions about the existence, uniqueness, and other mathematical properties of G2 manifolds, and mathematicians lack a systematic way of searching for these manifolds. <laughs> Heterotic M theory Because of the difficulties with G2 manifolds, most attempts to construct realistic theories of physics based on M-theory have taken a more indirect approach to compactifying 11-dimensional spacetime. One approach, pioneered by Witten, Horava, Bert Overett, and others, is known as heterotic M-theory. In this approach, one imagines that one of the 11 dimensions of M-theory is shaped like a circle. If this circle is very small, then the spacetime becomes effectively 10-dimensional. One then assumes that six of the ten dimensions form a Calabi-Yau manifold. If this Calabi-Yau manifold is also taken to be small, one is left with a theory in four dimensions. Heterotic M theory has been used to construct models of brain cosmology in which the observable universe is thought to exist on a brain in a higher dimensional ambient space. It has also spawned alternative theories of the early universe that do not rely on the theory of cosmic inflation. 